Uh, greetings from the Washington, D.C. office of NCBA. We look forward to kind of giving you a quick update here on how we finished off 2012 and what we expect 2013 to look like. Here we are a week from the inauguration and we are still really trying to uh, get a full accounting of what all transpired in the last minute activities of the 112th Congress. It was a mixed bag for the cattle industry. On the positive side, we were finally able to get some certainty into the tax code. Best example of that is with the death tax, where after years of going through one to two year extensions, we finally got a permanent extension of the $5 million exemption to the death tax per person, $10 million per couple. Those exemption amounts will be tied to inflation, so they will grow over time. We were also able to maintain the step up in basis. Now, while it's not perfect for everybody, it is a great start for us because over the past several years, while we've been trying to advance the ball, we've also had to play a lot of defense on just maintaining what we've had. We've now made that permanent, so now we'll start looking at some other opportunities to go in and try to protect farm and ranch estates. One of the best opportunities we see coming up in the next couple of years will be to uh, kind of redefine the special use valuation, 2032A. We think that has a lot of promise in trying to provide even more protection to each and every one of your members. So we're excited about that. The bad thing is, though, we did have to compromise on the tax rate for everything over those exemption amounts. The tax rate went from 35% to 40%. Now, before everybody gets upset, it's good to just think about to where we were because in the last couple of days before that deal was done, the president and the Democrats on both sides were really pushing for a $3.5 million exemption and a 45% tax rate on everything over that. We really wanted to maintain our exemption levels, so we utilized several of our Democratic friends, especially on the Senate side, in order to maintain those levels, and we had to give a little, and that's where we gave was on the tax rate. So it's one thing that uh, it kind of spoils it to some extent, but once again, we do have these permanent, and we can just spend our time on trying to improve them over the years. One of the big disappointments is the fact that we did not get a 2012 Farm Bill. The 2008 Farm Bill was extended, but it was only extended through the end of September 2013. So we only have about nine months before we will uh, be in a situation where farm programs start to expire. While it buys us some time, it did not extend any of the disaster programs. So once again, we are looking at heading into uh, a summer, which is expected to be equally as droughty as what we went through last year without any promise of help or support on these disaster programs. The only thing that would be able to salvage that is if we were able to get a farm bill sometime soon. But when you look at 2013, we doubt that's gonna be the case. We are about 30 days, 30 to 45 days from when the country butts up against the debt ceiling. We also have this mandatory sequestration cuts, which were postponed from the big fiscal cliff deal to the 1st of March. And at the end of March, we have the expiration of the continuing resolution that funds the federal government. With all three of those coming within about 40, uh, 30 to 45 days, that is really going to just sap all of the energy out of Washington, D.C. We don't expect really anything substantial to happen uh, in the spring because of all the fights around all three of those issues. So we don't expect a farm bill. We don't expect work on immigration. It's going to be uh, the fiscal cliff negotiations, the debt limit, and continuing resolution yet again. That also means we could see some additional cuts into farm programs that will affect a farm bill once we get to that point in time. A couple of other things that we're looking at for the year, I've mentioned immigration. Uh, there's a lot of buzz around immigration in D.C. right now, a lot of coalitions uh, putting, pull, coming, coming together, trying to get themselves established. Um, unfortunately, though, I think that with all of the turmoil that has always surrounded immigration, we'll see uh, the possibility of a couple of bills introduced, maybe even some action by one house or the other, but I doubt that we will see final action just because of all the time that's going to be eaten up with the economic issues. Really, we only have this year to do anything on immigration. If we spill over into next year, once again, we are into a midterm election season, and it's going to be hard to get anything done on immigration. But we are going to be in the middle of this and try to find a common-sense approach to provide the labor needs, but also the border security for this country. We're also looking at 2013 at reauthorizing the Animal Drug User Fee Act, a DUFA. 
This is extremely important to allow FDA to help the pharmaceutical companies uh, review and approve new drugs for use in our industry. It's a great program, something we have supported for many years, but it is always a vehicle for attacks from the extremists that want to rein in our use of many different veterinary products, but especially antibiotics. So we expect to spend a lot of time in 2013 pushing back against the attacks from these different groups. So we finished up 2012 with a bit of a mixed bag. Going into 2013, we have a bit of a mixed bag, but we know that we're going to have a lot of fight uh, to, to bring forward on a whole host of issues, whether it's immigration, antibiotics, or the Farm Bill. And we look forward to discussing this more in detail at our annual convention, which is coming up the second week of February down in Tampa, Florida. We look forward to seeing all of you there, and we really encourage your members to show up and especially participate in the committee process to make sure their vote and their voice is being heard in the NCBA policymaking uh, process. So thank you again. As always, if you need anything, give us a call here in the D.C. office.